Lady Rhea, the unit that invaded the monastery has been completely driven away. We were able to make a clean sweep of those who came to attack us. However, I fear we can do nothing but retreat for now. What of Sedith and Flane? Sedith and Flane will to escape in another direction. I have a message from them. I am sorry, Rhea. I fear we must return to a life in hiding. I detest that person with all my heart. However, Flane's life is more important to me than all else. I pray that you will one day be free from the burden of your work. I see. As expected, I am the only one left. Mother, please wait for me. I promise that I will save you. The filthy thief who stole you from the holy tomb. I will crush them with my bare hands! Edelgard, your majesty, I am so sorry. Silence. You must tend to your wounds. It'll do no good. I can't be saved. You must know that. Vladislava has also passed. The enemy has withdrawn. You are safe now. Understood. Good work. Another loss on my watch. As more blood wets my feet, they grow heavier with each step. Remorse, resentment, despair. I have dispensed with all such things to come this far. And we must keep moving forward. Hubert, tell me the status of the enemy. The battle has ended in a draw with severe injuries on both sides. Some known commanders have been slain. Garrig Mach has not taken much damage, and so it would not be out of line to claim it as a victory for us. Yes. We'll call that a victory. Although, I'm sure they will say the same. Yes, Your Majesty. Why is the church always like this? How am I supposed to train for that? It was way too scary. When I saw the enemy enter Garrig Mach, I prepared myself mentally for death. I thought it would be a fine time to die, but I suppose it wasn't quite time after all. Our luck was good to have grabbed victory. The church has great strength. We must not have grief, but must keep fighting. Can we be fighting now? This was certainly a momentous victory. We lost a lot, but we also gained a lot. Certain lords in the kingdom have examined the situation again and decided to join our cause. Changing their fealty based on just one battle. They are all a disgrace to the nobility. Today, our enemy held many faces I knew well. If we must fight to the death with that kind of opponent, what will become of this world? There's no stopping me! I'm ready to go strike the kingdom here and now! Everyone must see that we can easily unite Fodlan, don't you think? Excellent job, everyone. The battle is over now. While we have sustained heavy losses, our foe has suffered far more. Although not exactly as planned, a win is a win. It may be safe to say that there will be no more obstacles on our way to the next battle. We will break through the Teen Plains and then set course for Ferdiad, the Kingdom Capital. The final chapter of our fight with the Kingdom and the Church is close at hand. The time has finally come to invade the Kingdom Capital. Or so I declared. In truth, we'll be advancing to a different location. Only you and the rest of the Black Eagle Strike Force can know. Please bear that in mind. Seems you've already anticipated our intentions, Professor. Well done. To Friad, we must take Aryan Road, which lies near the border between the Empire and the Kingdom. As a city on the boundary of the two territories, it must be taken at once. There are many mages within Aryan Road. We will also face Cornelia, a general of the Kingdom. We must also contend with Rodrigue, the head of House Fraldarius, as well as his troops. Once we defeat them, Aryan Road will be ours. 
I hear Cornelia has a magic weapon at her disposal. We must attack before the enemy can respond with defensive measures. That is why we are preparing an assault before even our allies are aware. Even within our ranks, there is no way to know with certainty that there is not a rat among us who would leak such information. When Aryan Road falls, we'll focus on striking Ferdiad from both the south and the east. The deeper we carve our way into kingdom and church territory, the more favorable position. As ever, I'm counting on you, my teacher. Cornelia, I have a report from our scouts. The Imperial Army that departed from Gerig Mach en route to the capital now appears to be marching here. What did you just say? The speed of the army's movement quickens. They will be here to invade within days. I just sent some of my troops to support the capital. It is likely to be a fierce fight. How could this be? I have not heard a thing about... Oh, I understand now. I am the target. You? Are you sure they do not mean to take Aryan Road for strategic reasons? It would appear so from the outside. However, the circumstances are not that simple. And will you calm yourself? It will not be a whatsoever. The sweet children I have prepared will protect Aryan Road well. Cornelia. Aryan Road is a fortress city that was built about 400 years ago. Originally a base on the front lines of the battle against the kingdom, it was built using imperial money and technology. However, the head of House Roe secretly planned to betray the Empire. As the fortress neared completion, it was rebuilt as a base to defend against the Empire. When the fortress was completed, House Roe declared its vassalage to the kingdom. Since then, Aryan Road has never fallen. Not once. The beautiful white walls that protected against its enemies have earned it the nickname, the Silver Maiden. In the end, that is all it is to the Empire. The Silver Maiden stands as a bitter memory. We will now be destroying that memory. The past is the past. Now is now. A fortress that has never fallen. <laughs> I can't wait to make it fall. How savage of you. And yet, I must say I agree with the sentiment. Let us take the sturdy Aryan road and continue our march against the kingdom. An invincible fortress? Sounds perfect. Unfortunately, it will soon no longer be invincible. Silver Maiden's iron skin is about to be damaged. It's sad, really. Is it silver or iron? Use your language with clarity, please. Really, Lin. There must be a better way to say that. Since we are attacking a heavily guarded place, we must take extra care to prevent allies from getting injured. Thank you, everyone. I'm counting on all of you. Now, let's resume our advance. This battle is for the future of Fodlan. What turn of events has brought you so suddenly to Garrig Mach, uncle? Well, my business in the old Alliance territory had roughly finished. I wanted to see the face of my niece, who so bravely took Aryan Road. I have heard that it was done with truly magnificent tact, and that you even deceived some of your allies. I'm happy to have earned your praise. However, to say that I deceived my allies is a bit misleading. I despise leaks of information, and there may have been a church rat hiding amongst our ranks. Ah, I see. However, there are some unfortunate consequences. Cornelia surely planned to betray them, but she has been struck down. Truly wasteful meddling. Unless... was it your intention to kill her? Professor, don't joke about that. The only ones we came to kill were our enemies. 
She used a terrible magic weapon. Dolls that she could move and fight with. Did you know about them? Well now, if that were the case, would it not have been better to keep her as an ally? If you are only capable of such imprudence, this dark cloud might have future as well. Thank you for your concern. However, I will sweep aside any darkness that comes our way. I will be praying. Praying that the Empire will not become another Aryan Road. Another Aryan Road? Just what do you mean? Hm. I must take my leave now. Farewell. Lady Edelgard, you are. We just received some truly shocking news. It is said that pillars of light have rained from the heavens and disintegrated Aryan Road. Disintegrated? Why would he do that? Was Lord Arendelle just here? So that would mean... Hubert, give me the full report! Uh, my apologies. I, of all people, should be able to control my discomposure. The Pillars of Light descended and exploded, resulting in the complete destruction of the main building and the North Wall. It is believed that all key people within House Row, including its leader, were killed. Of the Imperial officers and men we kept at Aryan Road, about a third are unaccounted for. It can't be true. This is my uncle's trump card. In exchange for striking down Cornelia, he has destroyed Aryan Road. Perhaps we acted too soon in our disposal of Cornelia. No. If we'll be fighting them soon, there's no disadvantage to weakening their forces. It's also extremely valuable that we forced them to show their hand. Hubert, the investigation you made into the legend of Aelel, the Valley of Torment, this is likely what took place back then as well. Yes. The probability is high. North of Garrig Mach, there is a valley where the earth is always aflame. Once javelins of light fell from the sky there. They pierced the earth and set the forest ablaze, creating a land of torment. We believed it may have been the work of the goddess. But it was actually an attack by those who slid dark. That sums up all that we know. By gifting us that knowledge, those who died at Aryan Road will not have died in vain. Indeed. It would be good to control the flow of this information. True. We'll conceal this from everyone as best we can. I trust you, my teacher. Immediately! I'm sure everyone has heard about what transpired at Aryan Road. The Church has displayed their cowardice by indiscriminately using forbidden practices to kill the residents there. Their victims also include members of House Row, the Imperial Army, and many, many more. According to our investigation, the forbidden attack that destroyed Aryan Road cannot be used again so quickly. Even so, we cannot delay our efforts. We must put a stop to all of this by the end of next month. The leader of one of the Imperial factions has already initiated an attack on the Fraldarius territory lost by Rodrigue. 
Soon all obstacles blocking our path to Ferdiad will have vanished. A cornered animal is at its most deadly. We must move quickly. Next, we march through the Tail Team Flames. After that, we destroy Ferdiad. At that time, complete Imperial control over Fodlin will finally be a reality. <sighs> oh, I'm shaking with excitement! Ring on the battle! I understand that a confrontation is inevitable. Still, I wonder if there's some path we could take that would cause less suffering. This is the only path for the goal we are reaching for. And so we must keep walking. We are walking down the path to a better tomorrow. A cornered church? Hmm. Well, count me out from any forbidden sorcery that can destroy whole cities. If only there was an easier way to get more information on crests and relics. You are as negative as usual, Linhart. We have but one order. To emerge victorious. We're going to win this. We really are. After all, if we lose, everything will be terrible forever. Oh, no way. We can't let that happen. There's a lot to worry about, but I'm sure it will all work out. We'll win no matter what. So... Arian Road has fallen. Rodrigue, I swear that I will not allow your death to be in vain. The scouts have just now returned. Seems the Imperial Army is marching toward the Kingdom capital. Are you certain about this, Dimitri? As King, do you think it wise to intercept them yourself? No need to worry yourself. Even if I am defeated, the Blathed Bloodline will live on. And the Kingdom's territory has never been rich in resources. If the castle falls under siege, our loss is inevitable. I will deploy my army onto the plains and wait for the enemy. Please, position your forces so that they can flank the Imperial Army. Yes. Given the present situation, making our battlefield is a logical choice. I have no objection. However... There is only one person I am after. I have no interest in any other prey. I will take you at your word. Erasing the other child's existence is my task, and mine alone. I will get you back, Mother. I promise. What do you think, Lady Edelgard? Will they shut themselves inside of Ferdiad? They will try to intercept us. Of course, Ferdiad will not fall so easily. Even so, if we were to cut off their supply line with a large army, it would eventually fall. It makes much more sense for them to wager everything on a victory at the Tail Team Plains. The same plains where the so-called Divine Saros defeated Nemesis, the King of Liberation, in a comeback victory over a thousand years ago. And about 400 years ago, the hero Lu created the kingdom by defeating the Emperor of the Time on those very plains. Their goal must be to recreate that scene. Yes, I suppose so. Although the Imperial Army is powerful, if we were to compare the strength of our best to the best of the Knights of Seros, we would likely come up short. The Kingdom's army and House Blathed are also renowned for their unmatched persistence. On the battlefield, it can be assumed that their one and only goal will be to strike you down. Are you telling me to stay off the battlefield? Naturally. You are their aim, Your Majesty. You must know it only makes sense to keep you out of their reach. And you must know that, at a time like this, I absolutely cannot withdraw. <sighs> of course I know that. That is why I will refrain from asking you to stay away from the battlefield. The Immaculate One, descendants of the Ten Elites, and other extremely fearsome foes await us. But with the help of our friends, we have a chance of defeating them. We're the only ones who can. Within our group, I am included among those with the kind of strength we need to win. I absolutely will not remove myself from the front lines. Professor, you have that same strength as well, whether or not you realize it yet. Please, don't get yourself killed trying to protect me. Until the very end, we'll survive this trial together. Understood?
Yes? Oh, it's you, Professor. I was certain it was Hubert coming to drag me back to my duties. Your Majesty, you must know your supreme talents are needed at present. Why not gaze at these documents instead of the sky? Doesn't it? And the worst part is that he's always right, so I can't even argue with him. But that's enough about Hubert for the moment. While I have your attention, I'd like to thank you for your help in that last battle. As you well know, I'm perfectly capable of commanding the army by myself. However, when you're around, it's somehow different. I'm not sure I can properly explain it. I suppose your perspective on the battlefield is simply sharper than mine. When you're devising tactics and tricks for us, it's almost as though you can read the enemy's mind. No getting around it. Your talent for strategy far exceeds my own. I'm quite jealous, in all honesty. Is that a fact? Well, if you insist. I suppose a flower from another's field is always more beautiful. I'll admit, I think of you as rather detached. So to hear that you have emotions such as jealousy is... something of a relief. I can't deny it. Ever since I underwent those... procedures, I have certainly distanced myself from the ordinary world. Friends. That word somehow doesn't seem adequate. Besides, we've been friends for a long time, you and I. By now, we're so much more than that, at least in my mind. You know, instead of Edelgard, you can call me just... L, if you so please. That's what my parents and closest sisters used to call me when I was little. Now there's no one left who calls me L. But with you, well, I think I could allow it. In fact, it would mean a great deal to me. Why? Hmm. Well, you have stood beside me and shared my burdens. As I said, you are much more than a friend. In truth, you were like family to me. I suppose that's why. Mother. Oddly, the rain has come to fall yet again. At this place, once again, I will fight to take you back. The one who keeps me from seeing you again. I will be sure to return them to the earth from whence they came. The foolish descendant of Herak, who bears her fangs at me, will suffer the same fate. Lady Rhea. Call me Seros now. I am no longer the Archbishop, but rather, a warrior. Yes, Lady Saros. Because of the rain, we have not yet confirmed the position of our enemy, or of the Kingdom Army. Search the route to Ferdiad. It is unlikely that they have strayed far from it. When you discover the Imperial Army's main force, commence the attack. If the Kingdom's army has already engaged, flank the enemy as planned. As you wish. Wait for me, dear child. I will be paying you a visit soon. When this sword has been plunged into your chest, yes, that is the very moment I long for. I was hoping they would strike the church first. We must have miscalculated the rate of their advance. Reorganize the formation. We have no choice but to buy time until the church arrives. It will be a long battle. Are you afraid to do? No. So long as I am at your side, there is nothing to fear. I can always rely on you. Just watch, my friend. We will prevail. I will not fail to get revenge for all who have fallen. I would follow you anywhere, Your Majesty. Good luck out there. You as well, Dudu. You as well. Your Majesty. For you, 
I will. A flag of blue is flapping in the rain. It must be the Kingdom army. Yes. It seems that King Dimitri is leading the troops himself. However, the Knights of Saros have yet to be seen. Perhaps they have split up. I can't imagine that Dimitri would leave the capital to the church and face us with the Kingdom army alone. He must be planning to use the church to gain the upper hand in battle. With the rain, that must be difficult to coordinate. Still, the Knights of Saros must be around here somewhere. And we should be on alert for attacks from the side and rear as well. Inform the entire army. Yes, sir. Now that I think about it, the Kingdom's army is quite different than it once was. They have taken a position of interception. In the past, the King would have introduced himself before beginning a fair fight. A fair fight? The words alone remind me of how he once was. Don't you agree, Professor? Yes. He often spoke of such things back at the monastery. Well, at the present, the words fight do not seem to suit Dimitri anymore. He dislikes making victims of his friends. But other than that, he will do most anything these days. If he stops at nothing to continue the onslaught, I cannot imagine what will become of the battlefield. True. As soon as we can take our battle formation, we must advance. Dimitri. That past you cling to, I will soon free you from it. Edelgard, you... I will kill you. You will know the regret of my father, who was killed for you. Of my stepmother, who was slain by your own daughter. You will bow your head before all of the lives you trampled for your ideals, before you die in misery. Your obsession with me is appalling. If you were a normal human, you would most certainly have died already. Farewell, King of Delusion. If only we were born in a time of peace, you might have lived a joyful life as a benevolent ruler. <laughs> to the fears of eternity with you, El. Withdraw immediately. Fall back to Ferdiad. The goddess is watching over us. If we hold strong, we will surely be saved. Understood. Retreat! Why do you insist on being such a loathsome obstacle? You stole my mother's heart and wield the sword of the Creator, just like that savage King Nemesis. I swear. With these very hands, I will take her back. Until then, wait for me, dear mother. Rhea. She is our enemy, but I must admit that she plays cards magnificently. You mean using the goddess's name in order to boost morale? That's true, but she also shows great skill in devising her tactics. Using the bewildered Kingdom army as a shield while she and the Knights retreated. If they ran all the way back to Ferdiad, it will be very difficult to pursue them. Yes, together we'll end this once and for all. For all the lives lost in battle, by our allies and foes alike. And for Dimitri as well. Yes, the thirst for revenge that imprisoned him was the result of my uncle's strategy. He believed that I was the cause of everything, 
and he lost sight of his path as king. There was nothing I could do to save him, and so, the very least I could do was... No, the Edelgard who shed tears died many years ago. Everything that's happened, it's all just part of the ebb and flow of history. The tragedy of Duskar, our days at the Academy, father's death, and the five years you were gone. After all of that, at long last, we're here, this point in time. I hope you'll stay by my side until the very end. It's time for humanity to take this world back. So, we have finally arrived. It has been a very, very long road. Why are you here, Uncle? We haven't prevailed just yet. Even better. I decided I wanted to see the end with my own eyes. The very moment that humans will finally be free from the control of that false beast, Otis. Understood. Behold to your heart's content. Just don't get in our way. Of course. I could not stand to be dragged into the fighting. When this fight is over, a world completely controlled by the Empire will be upon us. Not completely. I will only do what I must. But until our reign becomes stable, Uncle, no, all of you. I believe that your power and knowledge may be able during that time of transition. Perhaps so. We also will do what we must. For that short while, we will lend you our strength. Yes, we're counting on you. For now. Professor, may I speak with you? I know the timing is less than ideal, but there's something I need to tell you. I imagine you've already sensed it, but even still, I must tell you the truth. Of the power you wield, and of what you are. I expected as much. You, like Rhea, share a bloodline with the so-called Goddess. Your mother likely had some connection to the Goddess whose power has always been sleeping within you. Five years ago, when your power awakened, I was afraid you would choose to join Rhea. I did. As you know, my goal is to free our world from the control of Rhea and the other children of the Goddess. I seek to obliterate her, as well as those around her who use the Church's power to control Fodlan. I swore to free the people from Rhea by striking her down, whether or not it meant making an enemy of you. And yet, you came to my aid, and chose to walk with me on the path against Rhea. I was overjoyed, of course, but I was also confused. I thought that perhaps it wasn't the path you were meant to take. But I chose to trust in you, to rely on you and your strength. And now, here we are. Thank you for listening, my teacher. I'm glad I finally had the chance to talk to you about it. After Rhea is gone from the world, I don't know what will become of you. But whatever happens, I hope you know that you're very special to me. I hope that I hold a special place in your heart as well. But regardless, it's time. Let's go, Professor. Rhea, members of the Church of Saros, surely there's no need to continue this fight. What could be gained by shutting yourselves inside the capital of a kingdom without a king? I will give you this one chance, and no other. Throw down your weapons and render. Unlike you, I have no desire to unleash wicked atrocities upon this world. Their silence speaks volumes. Shall we commence our attack? I'll wait just a moment longer. There are still many residents within the city. Unlike my attack on Garrick Mach five years ago, 
The church will not allow the inhabitants to evacuate. What the hell are they planning? Lady Rhea, or rather, Lady Sos, the Imperial Army is calling for our surrender. Is it wise to ignore them? Perhaps we could leave Fodlin and devise another plan. We shall not surrender! We must not lose! Even if it must split the heavens, we shall not yield to the Wicked Ones! Understood. I will do as you command. You have my fealty no matter what. Until my last moment of life. I'll stay by your side too. For... Now, Catherine. Set fire to the city. The Imperial Army will burn in the flames of eternal torment. What? No, you can't do that! Catherine. Now. As... as you wish. But is there truly no other way? I have no patience for foolish questions. I shall sacrifice as many lives as it takes. That apostate who insists on taking everything from me will be crushed by my own hands! That ghastly voice. Your Majesty, there's smoke coming from every corner of the capital. It seems they've set fire to the city. What? Damn it, Rhea. There really is no depth you wouldn't seek to. Everyone, we must commence our attack at once. Are you ready? Preparations are complete. Just say the word. Then we attack. We'll head straight for the castle and strike down their leader. Rhea, that vile creature called the Immaculate One. This is the end of our long war. After this victory, Fodlin will finally be united and truly free. The capital we're about to invade in flames. Do not rush to your deaths. Survive. Prevail. Do that and we'll witness the birth of a new world. I want to see it with all of you at my side. Understood? Of course. I will not fall and leave you without your protector. And you may live to see your dream come to fruition. For that... I shall survive and prevail. I am carrying the future of Bridget. I'm dying here. I will be winning for myself and for everyone. I will be surviving. We've been cutting our own path this whole way. There's no stopping until we reach the end. I can't die, or all my great work so far will have been wasted. Don't worry about me, Aidy. I won't fall before I've found my happily ever after. Maybe when this war is over, I can finally snag a good catch and settle down. Somehow we're already here. I wonder if the pitch as much as I'd like. If so, let's end this quickly. Edelgard, Professor, I'll do my best for both of you. If I die here, it would be with shame and regret. Oh, I can't let that happen! Once the world is united, I will lend my strength to both Edelgard and the Professor. To that end, I will lead us all safely to victory. My pride and duty as a noble demand no less, as do my own principles. Imperial Army, Black Eagle Strike Force, move out! Humanity stands strong, and people reach out for each other. There's no need for gods. Rhea, your reign of tyranny is over. <clears throat> the time has come.
Is it over? <laughs> A rising flame was alight as the flow of time carved a new history for Fodlan. With the fall of Ferdiad, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus and the Church of Seros both vanished into the people's memories. Fodlan was finally one unified nation under the rule of Emperor Edelgard and the Adrestian Empire. Embracing her newfound power, Edelgard could at last set about destroying Fodlan's entrenched system of nobility and rebuild a world free from the tyranny of crests and status. Yet, beneath the surface, an unseen and silent struggle began to take shape. From her seat of power, Edelgard could at last wage war on those who slither in the dark. The children of the goddess have been defeated at last. The shape of the world will be forever changed. Humanity is free now. The world is ours once again. Can you believe it? True. There is still much to be done. We can't ignore the possibility that our enemies will resurface one day. In the end, the fate of this world depends on the choices we make. I don't know what the future holds, but come what may, will you stay by my side? You chose to protect me at the Holy Tomb. Will you choose me then? What I'm trying to say is, I need you. You called me L. That's... I... That means more than I can say. And this ring... It's lovely. Thank you, my dearest friend. I will happily accept it. I must admit, I feared my feelings would be unrequited. So long as I had you on my side, it never mattered how many enemies I amassed. You were all I needed. All this time, I longed to share my feelings with you. And it seems you wished for the same. Now, our wishes have come true. This feeling, it's overwhelming. I promise the same. Together we can achieve anything. We will crush those who slither in the dark and restore peace and order to Fodlan. I will then find a suitable successor and hand over the reins of the Empire. When all that is done, it will be just the two of us. I look forward to starting our life together in the light of a glorious new dawn. Yes, that is all we can do for now. We must remain focused on our goals. To think that I may really call you my partner and equal now. The solitary reign of Edelgard has come to an end. From now on, we walk this path together. With time and care, the darkness shrouding this world will be lifted. You and I will become the light that shines over Fodlan, just as you have shined upon my life.
Thank you.